Okay, this is Plane Maker tutorial number 27 and Blender part 13. I'm back from a break that I took to publish the Verticopter and to do some other stuff. What I've also done in this time though, I've experimented a little bit with where I want to go next with this whole tutorial business. A lot of you are waiting for me to cover uh, moving parts, so I want to do that in the near future, but that means that I'll have to skip out on some of the detailed modeling stuff that I've been doing so far. So I'm going to have to pick up the pace a little bit. But what I'm probably going to do next is the cockpit instruments and how they work in 3D. How you can make 3D objects out of these 2D clickable items. And where we want to go after that is we want to make some more moving parts. For example, spinning fan blades for the turbofan engines. We've got some flexing wings. And those are some of the things I want to cover in upcoming tutorials. But for now, let's go back to Blender and continue on working on that cockpit. Okay, so we're back in Blender. This is pretty much where we left off. We had a panel that wasn't positioned properly yet, nor was the angle really correct. Our main interest was to get all the instruments modeled in 3D on this panel. So we had it angled already at 18 degrees. And now we angle it back. Now we go to this view and enable the background image. It really slows down Blender to have this huge background image and I also find that during screen capture it makes the process particularly tedious. So I'm going to show you just some basic stuff on how to do this. There's a combination of techniques and tricks you can use. Most of them are pretty straightforward. So I'm going to split this thing into four parts now and delete the three parts that I don't need because what I'm going to do is since these corners are pretty much identical I'm going to mirror them. Add the mirror modifier once for the x-axis and once for the y-axis now notice, if I go, go to this little button here, I can enable the axes of this object. So if I, once I enable that, then I get this indicator that shows me where this object's axes are pointing. And it doesn't always match the place where the uh, axis of the global seams are pointing. So here you notice that when I place the object, the z-axis points towards my face, and the x and y axis follow suit there. In order to correct the discrepancy between the axes of this object, and the axis of this entire scene, you can actually hit Control A and you get a pop-up list that says you can apply object scale and rotation to object data. And then what happens is that these coordinates match the ones that are the global coordinates down here. And it's a good idea to do that because once you start animating, you really start feeling that effect. And notice it also changes the characteristics of the modifiers that you've added. Now X and Y mirroring doesn't apply anymore. You have to mirror it along the X and Z axes. So once this is mirrored properly like this, I can use several techniques, and I'm going to disable the background image just because I can model a lot quicker this way. So I extrude the edges by one unit. I constrain it with the control key, like this, and then I place the cursor on here. I select this, and I go spin duplicate by minus 90 degrees with four steps. So I spin it, and there we go. I select all, I remove the doubles, and now I have the makings of this panel. I go ahead and uh, extrude this edge like that and like that. And then I have to make these things meet up like this. So it just really makes it a lot easier to only have to model one corner as opposed to having to model the whole thing. And then I would drag that middle vertex that you see right here until it's on that corner or on the cusp of that corner. Then I would put the cursor to that selection and select all these guys and just resize them, making sure that my cursor is in the 3D cursor pivot mode. So I resize it until it looks about right there. Whatever is not correct, I would have to tweak. And if I left something out, I would have to compensate for that and put it in later on. There are several different techniques you can use to accomplish the same task. Some techniques have advantages over others. Some are simpler, some are more beautiful, some are more detailed. There's just different techniques. The more techniques you have down or you're familiar with, the higher are your chances of succeeding in this whole area of modeling stuff. Now I can extrude a bevel this way. Now I have the beginnings of this protruding instrument, but I want more. I want to make these edges a little bit beveled, so I select all and I select bevel. Now I'm going to try to get these things less faceted or smooth, but look what happens when I say set smooth. Then I've got these weird artifacts going on and this sort of rounded look to everything, and that's not what I wanted. So I'm going to add a modifier, and it's called edge split modifier. It'll calculate the geometry of your object, and based on the angles it will say I will consider this a smooth edge if it goes past a certain angle. What I see here is that my angles are not sufficient. It's 45 degrees, and that's not enough to clean up these 
face plates that are supposed to be crisp and not so smooth. I still have the option of creating solid faces out of those that are left over. And once I have this, I say set solid to that face. And now I have it exactly the way I want it. I have the surfaces solid and the edges are rounded and curved off. Okay, so now that you've seen me use that technique, I'm going to delete this because I have a hidden layer that has all the instruments uh, modeled already. It took me one evening to model all these instruments. And uh, again, here's an example of a few buttons that are repeated along a certain path. You can use the array modifier in order to determine how many repetitions you want and how far apart they are from each other. So once you have that, the other thing to take note of is the normals. I want to check that the normals are all outside if you don't want to run into visual problems in the simulator later on. For now, I just wanted to concentrate also on getting one of the instruments uh, in the 3D cockpit onto this so that we have a working instrument in 3D view. Okay, so I go to Image, and I open up the Cockpit 3D Panels Panel Airliner PNG. This is ultimately the file that we want to draw from. But the problem is I don't have a reference. How can I make sure that this one is lined up perfectly over top of that instrument that's supposed to be there? This was good for the background for the 2D cockpit, but now that we have a 3D cockpit, we need to have some sort of reference to know where to map this particular instrument. I can take a wild guess. I can go project from view here and move it to where I think this instrument is, but that's just not good enough if we're going to map this. So what we're going to have to do so we're going to have to go back to Plane Maker, go to the 3D panel view, and take a snapshot of this. So on the Mac, it's Command-Shift-3, and that will put a picture of this on my desktop. And now I go to Photoshop, I open up that file, and then I select it all and copy it, and then I paste it in here and position it properly. And once it's positioned properly, I have the instruments exactly where they belong. Now I export this file and use that as a reference for my skinning here in this view. So I'm going to replace this image with one that I prepared already that has these cockpit instruments already installed. So when I go and try to skin it, everything should line up properly. And I'm actually going to make a distinction in this skin. All I'm interested with this instrument is that the actual instrument lines up with what X-Plane uh, has content in. So the rest of the instrument I want to skin with other graphics that aren't animated or that aren't really used by X-Plane. And I'm going to position that and resize it exactly so that it fits in here, which I actually is running a little bit of a risk because you run the risk of distorting the content on those monitors. But we'll see how bad it is. Let's try mapping the rest. I'm going to select the inverse. And this I'm going to map across this gray surface here. So let's preview it and see how it looks. Okay, now this is really important, a really important step. We have to make sure that this texture here is going to be compatible with the Blender export script. So what I have to do is I have to rename this to panel.png and then the script will recognize it as a file that contains animated panel objects. So in order to double check that, I can just go to xplane panel regions, that's part of that plugin, and I can say create new region. And I know that this file is 1024 by 1024, so I can simply go OK. Now it's generating this texture map that allows for X-Plane to identify the parts that are mapped to this as animated texture files. So once that's ready, I will hit Save, and I will export this as an X-Plane version 8, version 9 object. So let's check out the 3D cockpit here. My frame rate is so low right now because of the many 3D graphics programs I have open in the background. But you see here that the instrument that we just built and just skinned is actually functional. I'm going to drive around a little bit and set the plane into curvy motion. And let's see if in the 3D cockpit, yeah, see, we see this instrument is actually live. And just imagine all these instruments being live. All these knobs need to be redone or the, the normals need to be calculated outside in order for it to look like. I think we have something so far to work with. So good job if you've uh, followed along so far. The next thing we want to get into is how to make these types of switches, for example, live as well so that you can flick them with a mouse and see them animated going up and down and how to do that. Again, please rate this video, stick around for the next couple of videos, and if you want to support me, check out the Vertocopter, and uh, this plane is also eventually going to be up as payware. Thanks.